Reliability and validity are two important characteristics of good measurement. Reliability is fairly straightforward to evaluate and very fairly straightforward to define because it is simply whether you get the same result over and over if you repeat the same measurement. Then uh, you can use that consistency with repeated measures to calculate an estimate of reliability. So that is fairly straightforward. The issue of validity is much more complicated. Validity refers to whether your indicators measure what they're supposed to measure. The problem is that uh, because we cannot observe the thing being measured directly, we cannot really statistically assess whether the indicators correspond to the attribute or the trait or the construct that we want to measure. So validity and validation are complicated topics and in this video I will introduce you to some of that complexity. One thing that makes validity literature difficult for uh, a person who just started reading it is that there are so many different terms. So measurement validity uh, is uh, whether an indicator measures what it is supposed to measure. That is fairly straightforward to define what exactly that means. It gets to uh, some complications. But then there's all this uh, terminology. You have uh, face validity, content validity, convergent validity, discriminant validity, nomological validity and so on. So uh, there are so many different terms. Do you have to understand all these? Are these uh, facets of validity that all have to apply? Are they different? Uh, definitions, are they contradictory and so on. One way to understand this literature or start to understand this literature is to uh, understand that there is a difference between validity and validation. So uh, validity refers to whether the indicator measures what it is supposed to measure. Validation refers to different ways that we can argue or assess validity. And these concepts are mostly focused on validation. Denny Borswoon's article in Psychological Review uh, notes that uh, these uh, terms originate from uh, questions uh, such as asking uh, people whether they think that the measurement is valid. So that's a way of validation that led to a term uh, face validity whether the measure can predict something useful that is predictive validity. So it's about validation more than about validity and these are two different things. So how do we argue validity and how do we define validity are two different things. If you just look at the definition of validity and then it, it, the things are much simpler because you don't have to understand m most of this. But there are uh, important terms that you need to understand because they are commonly used. And uh, I will now explain three of them. These originate from psychometric texts from 1960s, or at least they are the, the Nunali's book from 1960s is commonly cited as a source for these terms, and that made these terms popular. So, are these content validity, predictive validity, and construct validity? Are they actually about validity or validation, and are they competing concepts or are they complementary concepts? Do you have to demonstrate all of this in your study or do you have to focus on one? Let's take a look at what these concepts actually mean. So uh, these are different things. The idea of content validity is that your indicators in your scale measure all different aspects or dimensions of the phenomenon. Uh, a typical example is a math exam. So if you do a math exam then uh, it has to cover all the content of the course. So if you have an elementary school math exam, there is uh, subtractions, multiplications, uh, divisions and sums that you have to calculate. So you have four different things. If you only cover subtractions, then uh, you lack content validity. So it's uh, whether the indicator summarize some dimension of the, uh, some domain that the test or exam is supposed to summarize. So content validity is mostly focused on uh, on educational measurement or, so, or something uh, where you have to summarize people's capabilities or skills in a certain domain of, of things with a single score. Predictive validity is about uh, prediction or forecasting. And uh, forecasting means that can you actually, uh, based on your data, say something about the future. It's not measurement. Prediction and measurement are two different things. 
A typical example is college entry exams. They are not designed to measure who is uh, good at school, who is smart or something else. They are designed to predict who is going to uh, do well in the college and who is going to graduate because the college uh, is not as interested in getting people who are smart or hardworking than it's interested in getting people who are going to graduate. Then we have construct validity and uh, this is about construct measurement but it is uh, a special kind of, of validation technique. So construct validity is not the definition of, of measurement validity, instead it is a validation technique and why that's the case uh, becomes clear on this next slide. So the idea of construct validity is that there is a, a nomological network. The nomological network is uh, a network of constructs uh, and their theoretical relationships. For example, uh, the example given by Borsboom and colleagues is that we have intelligence as our focal construct, then we have general knowledge as another construct and criminal behavior as another construct. We uh, have a strong hypothesis that intelligence is negatively associated with criminal behavior and positively associated with general knowledge. The idea of construct validity or construct validation is that uh, we assess our, our measure of intelligence. Let's, let's say we use an IQ score and we, we check if the IQ score correlates positively with general knowledge examination score and negatively with length of criminal record. So the idea is that we have this uh, theoretical word here, the nomological network and we have the empirical word here, our measured correlations, and then we check whether the measured correlations from our data matches these theoretical expectations. So whatever our, our measure is here, it is valid, construct valid, if these uh, relationships between the measured scores correspond to the uh, relationships that we theorize. This uh, is uh, somewhat useful way of uh, assessing validity. So if your scores don't behave as expected, then that's uh, one reason to either uh, doubt the validity of your scores or doubt the correctness of your theory. So that's useful. But uh, this is a very limited also because consider if you have a very green field of study. So you're studying something that hasn't been theorized much before. So where exactly would you get this nomological network? If you're the first person to introduce a new construct to, to your field, then how exactly are you going to argue that that construct has an established relationship with other constructs because there is no existing research on that construct. But this is, uh, so basically uh, the idea of construct validity is whether these empirical con correlations are good representations or proxies of these theoretical con theoretical. Uh, relationships. One important uh, thing that construct validity and these other three, other two uh, commonly used validity terms don't address is that they don't really address what is the relationship between your data and your theoretical concept. So content validity basically just addresses whether uh, these uh, data cover the content of the thing that you're studying. So do, does your math exam cover all the, as, all the things that was taught during the course? Predictive validity is do these scores predict something? So those two are not about theoretical concepts at all. So predictive validity and content validity, there is, there is no theoretical concept in their definition. Construct validity has the term construct and in, in the name and it also uh, concerns the theoretical concept, but it doesn't address whether the data corresponds to the theoretical concept. It only addresses whether the relationships between the variables correspond to the relationships between the theoretical concepts. That is interesting, but it doesn't really address how the theoretical concepts are related to uh, the data. So that is uh, beyond these terms. There is a, so how do we define validity? One good candidate definition is that we te define test as a valid if the attribute being tested or measured exists. So we uh, 
assume that the construct exists independent of measurement and that is the, the realist perspective on measurement. Then we uh, claim that the variation in observed data is due to the variation of the construct. So, so there is a variation in the construct. Let's say there is the construct of the intelligence. Some people are more intelligent than others and there is variation in, in uh, IQ scores. We say that the IQ score is a valid measure of intelligence if the variation in the intelligence causes variation in the score, scores. In other, uh, in other terms um, or other words, some people perform better in IQ tests because they are more intelligent. Some people perform worse because they are less intelligent. So that's the idea of variation in construct causes variation in the observed data. And so the observed data is of course a function of uh, construct and some measurement error. The, that's an easy definition. What is difficult is to argue how that your scores are actually valid. So validation is the hard part. Defining validity this way is very simple. So how exactly do you validate and uh, what do you have to write into your paper to convince your readers that your measures are valid. To understand that let's take a look at compare uh, this uh, latent variable model for validity and uh, construct validity. So the construct validity perspective is about uh, more about epistemology. So it's uh, what can we learn from the correlations in our data? Can we use the correlations in our data to learn something about the constructs? That is a useful way of validation but it doesn't really address whether the test is valid. Then the latent variable theory presented in the last previous slide uh, is about ontology. So does the, uh, the attribute exist and uh, does the variations in the attribute produce variations in the test score. So these are different, the focus is slightly different. Uh, the concepts of focus here in construct validity is in the correlations. So it's the meaning of what do the correlations mean? Can we uh, generalize from observed correlation to a, a theoretical correlation? And uh, in the latent variable model, the uh, idea is on, on reference. So do the uh, indicators, the variables actually refer to any real entity? We have to argue that. Then the empirical focus is uh, on correlations. In construct validity, we check the correlations between our data. And uh, if those correlations match the, uh, the theoretical expectations, we conclude that the test is valid. In latent variable theory, we have to argue the causation. So uh, validation here is not a methodological problem, but a substantive problem. So we have to really argue why we think that our IQ test or innovation score actually is, uh, varies because the construct being measured varies. So we have to uh, explain uh, ideally what is the mechanism of variation. So how do exactly person's intelligence for example influence how they do uh, in IQ scores. This is of course uh, a lot more challenging task and it uh, places more emphasis on uh, on validation studies and the theoretical part of the validation study whereas construct validation is simply about calculating correlations and see whether they match empirical expectations. Uh, both are useful because uh, if your measures don't behave as expected that's uh, a reason to suspect that the measures may not be valid but ultimately that is uh, not sufficient to claim validity. You have to claim uh, look at the cause of process. We can also take a look at how, how uh, the latent variable theory differs from classical test theory which gives us the definition of reliability. The uh, idea is that uh, classical test theory is uh, a psychometric model. It's not a measurement theory. So the scope is it's much more narrow. It's a, it's a, a model that describes how people do, uh, respond to surveys or how they uh, respond to different psychological tests. Latent variable theory is about measurement theory and it takes the realist ontology Classical test theory doesn't really uh, say any, anything about ontology. So it doesn't say whether the scores measure anything. It only gives us a reliability and true score. Then uh, latent variable theory is focused on validity and construct measurement. The um, equations for these uh, two models can look similar. 
So classical test theory is explicitly defined as an equation. So uh, the observed scores are deterministic linear uh, uh, combination of true score plus some random noise. In the latent variable theory, uh, this is more general. We're just saying that variation in the construct scores causes variation in the observed scores. The statistical, uh, there is therefore some kind of statistical association between the construct and the measure, but it may, may not be necessarily linear. So we can model other kinds of relationships. And uh, this takes the relationship, the statistical model, simply as an approximation for the causal relationships. Then uh, the true score or construct influence in different indicators in classical test theory, we take it as an assumption that the true score influences all indicators equally. So if we eliminate all random noise in the data, then all the indicators are going to be exactly the same because they share the same true score. This is called the tau equivalence assumption. Tau is for the true score in Greek. Then uh, here in latent variable theory, we just say that the indicators, the variation in indicators are de depends on the variation of the construct, but we don't really make any explicit claims about how that dependency manifests statistically. So different indicators might, may depend differently on the construct. Some may be more sensitive to certain levels of the construct than others. And this allows us to do all kinds of uh, statistical models, particularly the IRT or item response theory models are based on this kind of thinking. Uh, measurement error in these models is uh, classical test theory is simply about random noise and independent between items. Then in latent variable theory, uh, we can have all kinds of uh, sources of measurement error. But the key thing that we have to argue is that they are in the construct actually is a cause of the indicators or the variance of the construct is a cause of the variance of the indicators. And uh, that is much more challenging to do than simply assessing reliability. Here's a one uh, very simple way that we can uh, use uh, this approach, the uh, latent variable model to assess reliability and validity. So if we uh, take the assumption that linear uh, statistical associations are useful for assessing causal relationships, then we could say that uh, the uh, observed score is a function of the construct score, we use, use t here, plus some systematic measurement error, plus some random noise. So there are different causal influences to the true score or the construct score that we are um, uh, estimating with that kind of model here. So we have a uh, error in reliability and we also have the systematic error, error in val validity. The problem of course here is that uh, if you have unique random noise and then you have an indicator that is unique, then it may be difficult to, uh, to know whether uh, the indicator's measurement there is actually validity error or reliability error. So oftentimes you can't really say which one it is. Then um, a summary of all this, uh, we don't really have any proofs of measurement validity. So validation is, uh, is more of a substantive argument than a statistical argument. Nevertheless, we can say that if uh, many indicators or two or more indicators are highly correlated, then they may be measuring the same thing. We just don't know what the thing is and we have to argue based on theory that the construct actually causes certain kind of behavior in people and then uh, that's how we argue validity. Then uh, it's possible that the indicators correlate from some, for some other reason and uh, if measure behaves as expected uh, to other, with respect to other measures it may be valid. So that's the construct validity way of validating things and it's a useful technique but you shouldn't rely it on it as your only technique. And uh, typically with the latent variable theory you uh, work with this kind of models so you specify one latent variable as a source of variation of multiple indicators and this is uh, called the common factor model. So it's a factor analysis model and uh, that's commonly used with this kind of uh, validity framework. This is a, a very complicated topic. If you want to study more about validity, I can recommend you two good books. I like the writings of, of Denny Borsboom. So he has written a book called Measurement in the Mind, which is an introductory level book. So you can read that after reading, uh, for example, the Velis scale development, which gives you an overview. 
And once you have read that book, then you can look at uh, a more challenging text such as Frontiers of Test Validity Theory by Keith Marcus and Denny Boris Boom, which uh, summarizes uh, a broad range of validity literature and it's, it's fairly condensed. So that's probably not best for the first book, but it's a really great overview of test validity theory.